Good afternoon. Will the audience please rise for the platform party? The 245th commencement of Brown University, which was convened on the grounds of the Meeting House of the First Baptist Church in America, will now continue. The first oration, entitled Doors, will be given by Tawitai Alonabot Tawitai. Four years ago, when Brown's course catalog arrived in the mail, I imagined that I was standing at the foot of a very long and grand hallway. In front of me were far more doors than I could count. Some were engraved with words in languages I didn't understand. Others combined disciplines I had no idea could intersect. I had no clue where to begin. In my mind, to walk through one door would be to leave all the others behind. I soon learned that picking my first four classes was not, in fact, the biggest decision I would have to make as an undergraduate. There were still many big doors to contend with. I learned that the thing people really like to know after you've told them what you want to study is what you want to do with it. And so, like many students before me, I picked a responsible sounding answer. I was pre-med. <laughs> Why wouldn't I want to be a doctor? Didn't I want to help people? And wasn't it pretty clear what I had to do to get there? And without any satisfying response to these questions, I began college fully convinced that my goal in life was to become a doctor. And when I came face to face with one of the hardest pre-med requirements, 
To my surprise, the reactions of organic chemistry actually made sense. Crazy, I know. And I stuck with it in part because I was not very good at many other things. Most people trying to synthesize some complex organic molecule are like me when I try to decipher John Milton's Paradise Lost. I'm mostly lost. And it wasn't until the summer after my junior year that I was forced to fundamentally question where I was and where I was headed. I distinctly remember a friend asking me a simple but important question. What if I couldn't become a doctor? What if, all of a sudden, it was decided by every medical school that they would just never take me, and that there was no way, just no way at all, that I could become a doctor? What if that door suddenly closed? And in that moment, I knew I would be fine. The longing to become a physician just wasn't there in the way I knew it was supposed to be. It wasn't for me. And it took me a long time to accept that this didn't make me a bad person. But without any clear direction, I was terrified. I felt like I had mistakenly wandered back to the infinite hallway, reverberating with the echoes of, what are you going to do with your life now? Except this time, I didn't have four years of brown ahead of me. This was our senior fall. I had two semesters to figure everything out. The problem was that I had allowed myself to latch on to what I was good at and steer clear of what didn't come naturally. But we should not walk through doors just because they are open. Instead, we must distinguish between our strengths and our passions. Class of 2013, you are extravagantly talented, but what keeps you going and what keeps you up at night? I remember telling this story to a friend who is beginning medical school this fall. She told me that if the door closed on her, she would fight it. She would fight to keep that door open because she knows that this is what she was meant to do. And some of us are lucky enough to naturally excel at the things we love, but sometimes we have to pursue what scares us. I remember taking the introductory statistics course for students who want to concentrate in applied math. The first exam I failed at Brown was in this class. <laughs> and even though the subject fascinated me, failing made me think that I would never be good enough to legitimately take that interest any further. But we have now come to a point where we cannot let our setbacks determine our fate. John Milton, in, yes, Paradise Lost, wrote the following of Adam and Eve. They trespass, authors to themselves in all, both what they judge and what they choose. Authors to themselves. We, like Adam and Eve, are not simply victims of circumstance and coincidence. John Milton went blind in 1652 and had to dictate the more than 10,000 lines of Paradise Lost. He is not what happened to him, and we are not what happens to us. We are more than that. We can write our own stories. It's been a challenging road since stumbling through statistical inference three years ago, but next year, I'll be running statistical analyses to assess drug safety. I don't expect it to be easy, but there is nothing else I would rather be doing. And Brown, you have given me, given us, the courage to explore such intimidating and unfamiliar territory. You have shown us that as long as we are passionate and intentional in the pursuit of our goals, we do not have to be afraid to experiment and take risks especially when it seems like everyone else has it all figured out. And I credit this courage to you, my fellow Brunonians, because you have been holding doors open for each other for years. As peer advisors and mentors, you have counseled one another through demanding courses and difficult times. 
As residential peer leaders, you have transformed dormitories into communities. And as teaching assistants, you have held review sessions and led discussions as if you didn't already have your own exams to worry about. Today, we are graduating not just as 1,554 individual graduates. We are graduating as the class of 2013. We're graduating walking as one through the Van Wickle gates on the shoulders of those who have opened doors for us along the way. In return, the least we can do is continue this tradition of loving and supporting our neighbors, no matter where we go. And the thing is, is that some of us know exactly where they want to be for the next 5, 10, or 15 years. For the rest of us, that trajectory is considerably less certain, but we too must leave. But the search for something worth fighting for does not end here. As we head forth, we will encounter what would have terrified my first year self. We will find ourselves faced with a seemingly infinite number of doors. Some will be ornately decorated and lined with great salaries and generous 401ks. Others will be run down and wearing at the hinges. Some will lead you halfway around the world, and others will lead you back home. And some of us, inevitably, will build our own doors. So as we reach for the handle and embark upon the rest of our lives, remember this. Do not walk through a door just because it is open. Find the door you refuse to let close. And that, I promise you, is the right one. entitled Heads Up will be given by Elizabeth Susan Mills. Tony, you're a tough act to follow. I came into Brown with a plan, and that plan changed. This isn't as much my line as it's all of ours. We were gently nudged away from one concentration when we couldn't even sit through the introductory courses, introductory lecture. And then we stumbled into the most unexpected of disciplines when a professor's shopping period pitch inexplicably spoke to us. The question nagging at each of us now is, does the Brown mentality, the figure it out as you go along approach, translate into the real world. For the past four or so years, the Brown community has unconditionally trusted us. As President Paxson described earlier this year, Brown students are trusted to conduct themselves with constructive irreverence. We challenge assumptions. We bend rules. We demand overrides. <laughs> In short, we're irreverent disregarding the linear path in favor of our path. And we have, or we had, the luxury of being so bold because our president, our professors, and our peers trusted us. Well, the real world threatens to be far less trusting. In early September, as much of the Brown community gathered on this very green for convocation, I was facing a brown bag lunch at a lonely desk in Washington. I spent my fall semester on a leave of absence, interning in DC, and on that particular day, the second of my new job, I was still navigating lunch break protocol. Could I go for some comfort food or was I expected to go for something healthy 
Was I expected to work through lunch or could I talk with friends? So I'd settled on trying to look busy as I ate my lunch alone and I felt incredibly uncomfortable. And this rather pitiful scene conveniently reflects just how down I felt at that moment. The catalyst for my woes? A piece of advice I'd received from a superior the previous day. Keep your head down and do good work, she'd said. As good as that piece of advice was, as good as it is, it just wasn't for me. For the past three years, I'd been unconditionally trusted. We've all been unconditionally trusted. Trusted to figure Brown out as we went along. Trusted to come up with our own method when the existing one didn't quite work. Trusted to understand that failure wasn't an option. No credit was. And so I witnessed many months <laughs> And so I witnessed many months before graduation, real world values being at odds with ours here at Brown. Keeping your head down, it implies insecurity. Yet the success of our Brown educations hinged on us participating confidently in the process. We likely made more decisions in our first semester here at Brown than we did throughout our entire high school experiences. And I'd venture to guess, if you're anything like me, we made some bad ones before we made good ones. But eventually it worked. It worked because it didn't. We adapted. The biggest distinction I've noticed between Brown and everywhere that lies beyond those gates is this allocation of trust. It's inherent here, and thank goodness for that, because we needed that trust given how much we are destined to experiment, explore, and likely to fumble throughout our time here. We needed that trust to push through our inevitable periods of uncertainty. When I told people outside of Brown that I planned to take a semester off from school, I got regarded with more than a healthy dose of skepticism. People asked me a lot of logistical questions. Do you have a job? Won't you graduate late? My peers at Brown, you guys, asked questions of a different nature, ones that opened up conversations. You wanted to talk about what I hoped to see, to feel, to find. What will you do first, you asked. The important distinction here is not that Brown students ask exponentially more interesting questions than everyone else, though that does tend to be true. More significant is the fact that my peers at Brown regarded me with that underlying sense of trust, trust that if I wanted to, of course I'd find a way to make my time off worthwhile. Here's the good news. Even outside of Brown, trust can be earned. Trust can be earned. The Brown mentality can come with us wherever we go next, if we're smart enough to wield it wisely, and if we adapt our tactics to fit our new settings. We certainly had to adapt. It's not working. We certainly had to adapt when we first arrived at Brown, and we can do it again now that we're leaving. We can do it without relinquishing our newfound confidence and creativity. Now, I wouldn't be a Brown student if I didn't toe the line between independence and in subordination, but in learning how to strike that balance, I've come to appreciate that it is possible to keep your head up and do good work. So, in the face of that demoralizing advice that I got in Washington, I decided to adapt the words of wisdom to better suit my needs. I didn't expect the workplace to operate like a brown seminar, but I did expect the freedom to keep my head up so I could see where I was going and see where I wanted to go next. It took time, and it wasn't easy. My voice started off more than a little shaky, and my first few ideas simply missed the mark. And my jokes, they fell flat again and again. But I kept at it. I kept seeking to learn and adapt, even when feeling a little bit uncertain. I had to earn my coworkers' trust before getting a seat at the proverbial table. And eventually, I did. Now that we're graduating, and so on the brink of starting something new, we're at risk of being timid, of introducing only the most polished versions of ourselves to the world. It's these moments when we're tempted to keep our heads down rather than bring up our out-of-the-box ideas that it's most important for us to think back on our brown experiences. If the cushion of trust was what made us so bold here, we must walk out of the Van Winkle gates with an unshakable trust in ourselves everyone else will come around in time. For now, we can all agree on this. 
whether it will be teaching or investing or in a coffee shop or a boardroom. It will be worth bringing ourselves wherever we go next. Congratulations, 2013. Woo! Thank you. Candidoti Honorandi Nunc Veniant. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Honoris Causa, Benjamin Affleck. Director, producer, writer, and humanitarian, you have built one of the most eclectic and intriguing bodies of work in film today. Since your first Academy Award for the screenplay of Goodwill Hunting, you have expanded your repertoire to portray a host of diverse characters and aspects of American life. As a storyteller, you have brought your deep love for your hometown of Boston vividly to the screen. You have been heralded as a talented producer and an astute director, and that promise came to fruition last year with the success of the Academy Award winning film Argo. Through your depiction of this fascinating piece of American history, you both entertained and encouraged viewers to think critically about our international relationships. Outside of Hollywood, your establishment of the Eastern Congo Initiative, the first US-based advocacy and grant-making initiative working exclusively with the people of that war-torn area, has set positive change in motion, supporting maternal and child health, higher education initiatives, and community-based economic development to build a safe and sustainable future. For your admirable work to improve the lives of those hit hardest by deprivation and war, and for your contributions to the world of film, we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa. Autoritate mihi commissa te agradem in artibus elegantibus doctore submitu, omniaque iore atra privilegia ad gradem pertinentia tibi concedo, in huis testimonium hoc diploma tibi, tibi collegiator trado. That's it? That's it. This is a spectacular um, honor for me. Among other things today, uh, in terms of higher education, I passed Matt Damon. Uh, <laughs> and uh, my daughters, when I told them what was happening, my daughter is seven, she said, why are you doing that, Dad? You went to no classes and did no homework. <laughs> the mouth of babes. Uh, in truth, my mother is here. She means a lot to her. She never got to see me graduate uh, from any higher education at all. So, Mom, this is for you. I love you. Madam President, thank you very much. Brown, class of 2013, go get them!
Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Letters, honoris causa, Juno Diaz. Writer, educator, activist, your words, both written and spoken, illustrate the immigrant experience in America and the challenges facing those whose identities are shaped by exposure to multiple cultures. As a Pulitzer Prize winner, a National Book Award finalist, and a recipient of a prestigious MacArthur Fellowship, you have demonstrated the impact the prose can have on our understanding of our neighbors and ourselves. In your capacity as a creative writing professor at MIT, the founder of the Voices of Our Nature's, Nation's Arts Writing Workshop, and an advisor to Freedom University in Georgia, you have explored innovative ways of bringing people back into conversation with the arts and academia. Your steadfast support for a path to citizenship and achievement for young, undocumented immigrants has given a voice has given a voice to the experience of those who were brought here in search of a better life, much like yourself. For your outstanding contributions to literature and learning, your compassion, and your belief in the power of education for all, we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. <laughs> Doctoritate mihi commissa te agradum literis doctoris admito omniaqua iure atque privilegia ad hongradum pertinentia tibi concedo. In huius testimonio hoc diploma tibi collegiator trado. Madam President, oh, I don't say that, you say that. <laughs> Madam President. Thank you. I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, Stanley Falco. <laughs> microbiologist, influential teacher and mentor, and Brown Graduate School alumnus, you are considered, woo, you are considered the father of molecular bacterial pathogenesis. Your desire to study in detail the attributes of microbes that do not cause disease has changed the way we think about bacteria in the human body and how we approach prevention and treatment of some of the most common ailments, including whooping cough. Each stage of your career has featured discoveries that helped build the foundation of infectious disease research today. Your groundbreaking work has illustrated the ways in which bacteria survive antibiotics by swapping resistance genes, how microbe and host cells interact to cause disease on the molecular level, and how particular genes can be isolated and used to learn about the individual steps of disease development. Perhaps even more important is the fact that you freely share your love of science and research with others and have dedicated a portion of your time to training generations of microbiologists and infectious disease physicians. For your influential contributions to medicine, public health, and the teaching profession, we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa.
Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, Beverly Wade Hogan. Educator, public administrator, community leader, and humanitarian, you have charted a personal and professional course of civic leadership and lifelong learning. A native of Mississippi, you have been profoundly dedicated to the growth and welfare of your home state, applying your knowledge and compassion to issues of mental health, women's safety, low-income housing, and economic development. As the first woman and African-American to serve in high-ranking state government positions, you helped to break down institutional barriers, begin productive conversations about economic and social justice, and improve the lives of your fellow citizens. Your steadfast leadership as president of Tougaloo College is lauded as Brown and Tougaloo celebrate the first 50 years of a vital partnership unparalleled in American higher education. Under your guidance, Tougaloo has established new programs encouraging its undergraduates to engage in hands-on research, to study social responsibility and international affairs, and to participate in a breadth of community-based programs. For the passion you bring to public service, your trailblazing approach to issues of racial and gender equity, and your devotion to teaching and learning we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Oct <laughs> Auctoritate mihi commissa te agradum in literis humanoboris, Doctoris submitu, omniaque aque privilegia ad gradum pertinentia tibi concedo, in huis testimonium hoc diploma tibi cum summa observantio trado. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Medical Science, honoris causa, Risa J. Levizo More. Medical practitioner, professor, policymaker, and philanthropist, your influence upon public health in the United States is immense. As president and CEO of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the largest nonprofit entity dedicated solely to health and health care, you have implemented transformative programs to address the nation's childhood obesity epidemic, the shortage of highly trained nurses, the social factors that impact health among the most vulnerable populations, and the rising costs of health care. The depth of your medical knowledge and the strength of your leadership have brought change directly into the communities that need it most. You are widely praised, not only for ideas and your conviction to see them through, but also for your collaborative nature, your compassion, and your intrepid spirit. In recognition of your efforts to make healthy choice available to all and to reimagine the ways in which we can approach health care in this country, we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Medical Science, honoris causa. Doctoritate mihi commissa te agradum in medicina scientia doctori submitu omniaque jura atque privilegia ad hum gradum pertinentia tibi concedo in huis testimonium hoc diploma timi solemnitor trado. Madam President, I have the honor to present for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, Eduardo J. Padron. Civic leader.
leader, teacher, and champion of higher education, you are among the most decorated and influential co college presidents today. Having arrived in the United States at the age of 15, a refugee from Cuba, you recognized the importance of education and quickly seized upon the opportunities available for higher learning. Throughout your career as an economist, professor, and president, you have maintained a commitment to combining open access to education with the high standards of academic excellence. Under your direction, Miami-Dade College has put into practice innovative teaching and learning strategies and support systems to ensure the success of students from all walks of life. The college has also become a vital participant in the city's artistic renaissance and economic development. In recognition of your outstanding leadership, your innovative thinking, and your excellent example, you continue to set for generations of students, we honor you with the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Not quite yet. Autoritate mihi commissa te agradum in literis humanaboris doctoris admitu omniaque jura atque privilegia ad gradum pertinentia tibi concedo in huius testimonium hoc diploma tibi cum summa observantio trado. Bachelor of Arts, please stand. <laughs> Madam President, I have the honor to present the recipients of the degree of Bachelor of Arts of Brown University. Rachel Taché will accept her diploma on behalf of the recipients of this degree. Videte igitur uprobe integreque in emolumentium rei publicae, et in dei honorum undeset eos hoc gradu honoratos vos gratis. Be seated, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, please stand. Madam President, I have the honor to present the recipients of the degree of Bachelor of Science of Brown University. Sumita Raman will accept her diploma on behalf of the recipients of this degree. Videte igitur uprobe integrequa in emolumentium re publico, et e deum honorum undeset eas hoc gradu honoratos vos gratis. Bachelor of Science, be seated. <laughs> Bachelors not only of all arts, but also of science, please stand. Madam President, I have the honor to present the recipients of the combined degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science of Brown University. Susanna Weiss will accept her diploma on behalf of the recipients of this degree. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. <laughs> Videte igitur ut probe integre emolimenti in re publicae et in de honorum undesit eos hoc gradu, honoratus vos gratis. Be seated, bachelor, not only of arts, but also of sciences. Those who are both bachelor and master of arts, please stand. Madam President, I have the honor to present the recipients of the combined degree of Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts of Brown University. Heath Mayo will accept his diploma on behalf of the recipients of this degree. Videte igitur e probe inter Greque in emolimentium re publicae et ide honorum undesit eos hoc gradu, honoratus vocoratus. Be seated, those who are both bachelors and masters of arts. <laughs> bachelors not only of arts, but also of and science and master of arts, please stand. <laughs> Madam President, I have the honor to present the recipients of the combined degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science and Master of Arts of Brown University. Andrew Lee will accept his diploma on behalf of the recipients of this degree. Videte igitur ut probe inter Graequa in emolimentium re publicae et in de honorum undesit eos hoc gradu, honoratus vos gratis. Be seated, Bachelor of Arts and Science and Master of Arts. <laughs> On behalf of the Board of Fellows in the Faculty of Brown University, I hereby authorize the academic department chairs to present to the recipients of baccalaureate degrees the diplomas attesting to the Brown University degrees that they have been awarded. This to take place at appropriate ceremonies following these exercises. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremonies at which the graduating seniors will receive their diplomas individually will be held directly following this program. Members of the corporation, chairpersons, and faculty members will participate in these ceremonies. Okay, recipients of the master's degrees, please stand up. <clears throat> Madam President, the master's degrees were conferred earlier at the graduate school ceremony in Ruth J. Simmons Quadrangle. Cindy Long, Cindy Long will now accept her diploma on behalf of the recipient of the master's degrees. <laughs> Probe inter Graequae in emolimentium re publicae, et idei honorum undesit eos hoc gradu honoratus vos gratis. Masters in all disciplines, be seated. <laughs> Doctors of Medicine, please stand. Madam President, the Doctor of Medicine degrees were conferred earlier at the medical school ceremony in the First Unitarian Church. Eve Hoffman will accept her diploma on behalf of the recipients of this degree. Thank you. 
Congratulations. Videte igator of probe integreque in a mulamenti and re publicae, et idei honorum undeset eas hogrado honoratus vos gratis. Be seated, doctors of medicine. Recipients of PhD degrees, please rise. Madam President, the Doctor of Philosophy degrees were conferred earlier at the graduate school ceremony on Ruth Chase Simmons Quadrangle. Anna Macklin Ritz will accept her diploma and be rehooded by Deans Tyler and Bennett on behalf of all degrees, uh, all recipients of this degree. Videte igator of probe integrequa in a molimentium re publicae et in de honorum, udeset eos hogradu honoratus vos gratis. Be seated, doctors of philosophy. Madam President, earlier at the graduate school ceremony, the Horace Mann Medal was awarded to Karen Lee King, who received her Doctor of Philosophy in Religious Studies at Brown University in 1984. The award is given annually to a Brown Graduate School alumnus or alumna who has made significant contributions in his or her field inside or outside of academia. Dr. King is the Hollis Professor of Divinity at Harvard University, and her work focuses on how manuscripts of previously unknown Christian works discovered in Egypt changed the history of early Christianity. Dr. King, would you please, be, please rise and be acknowledged? The Board of Fellows has granted the degree of Master of Arts ad eundem to those professors, associate professors, and senior lecturers who hold no other Brown degree so that their names may be carried upon the rolls of the university as honorary alumni. Candidates for the Masters of Arts ad eundem, please stand. Auctoritati mihi commissa vos agradum in artibus magistri adiundum admito omniaqua iura ac privilegia ad hongradum pertinentia vobis concedo quare in testimonium diplomata vobis hoc post munus solemnitor tradum. Madam President, I have the honor to present the recipients of the degree of Master of Arts adiundum of Brown University. Their names are listed in the commencement program. They will receive their diplomas individually in University Hall immediately following these exercises. Videte igator et probe integreque in a molimentium re publicae et a deum honorum indeset eas hoc gradu honoratus vos gratis. Be seated, Master of Arts, adiandum. Now I ask that all parents and grandparents stand and be applauded.
Now I ask that all students who are graduating magna cum laude stand and be applauded. And now I ask that all students graduating today stand and be applauded. We salute you, we congratulate you, and we are proud of you. Yeah. Finally, I ask that you all join me in recognizing three students whose lives were tragically cut short. Undergraduates Avi G. Schaefer and Sunil Kumar Tripathi were distinguished and honored members of this magnificent class and will always live in our hearts. Undergraduate Laura Elizabeth Rothenberg is being remembered this weekend by her classmates during their 10th reunion. Now I would like to honor my faculty colleagues who are retiring this year and becoming professors of emeriti. We salute you and thank you for your many years of service and please join me in applause for this group of faculty. No university is greater than its faculty, and excellence in teaching and scholarship is at the heart of this university. I will now call upon Dean McLaughlin to announce this year's Faculty Teaching Excellence Awards. At a ceremony earlier this month, the Faculty Teaching Excellence Awards were presented. The awards recognize Brown faculty members for sustained and continued excellence in undergraduate teaching in each of the four major areas of the curriculum, humanities, life sciences, physical sciences, and social sciences. I'll recognize each awardee um, who will then please stand uh, and be recognized and applauded. Our first uh, award is to Professor Susan Bernstein. <laughs> Professor of Comparative Literature and German Studies, John Rowe Workman Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Humanities. <laughs> Brian Hayden. Professor of Cognitive, Linguistic, and Psychological Sciences, Elizabeth LeDuc Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Life Sciences. Barbara Mayer. Senior Lecturer in Computer Science, Philip J. Bray Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Physical Sciences. Kurt Teichert. <laughs> Environmental Stewardship Initiatives Manager, William, J. William G. McLaughlin Award for Excellence in Teaching in the Social Sciences. Congratulations to all four of the awardees. Thank you. I now call upon the chair of the faculty, Professor Gill, to prevent, present the Susan Culver Rosenberger Medal of Honor. Leon N. Cooper, for five and a half decades, you have dedicated yourself to teaching 
and research at the highest levels of international acclaim and excellence on College Hill. It was this community's good fortune to welcome you as an associate professor of physics in 1958. <laughs> Brown faculty, students, and staff of ensuing generations have had the beneficiary, have been the beneficiary of your wisdom, your wit, your joy, and above all, your great love of the discovery and communication of knowledge. Esteemed and renowned, for the groundbreaking discoveries made only a few years after receiving your, do your doctorate and which led to the BCS theory of superconductivity and the, 19 and, the, and the 1972 Nobel Prize in Physics. You are without peer among the Brown faculty. Quite literally, not content to rest on your laurels. You have continued throughout your career to develop widely influential theories in your own field and beyond, to teach and mentor undergraduate and graduate students with carrying expertise and at all times served as an exemplary model of academic citizenship. Deeply interested in the scholarship of others, you have crossed disciplinary boundaries and collaborated with colleagues who are your ardent admirers in the arts and humanities as well as the sciences. Your gentle presence and keen intellect loom large on this historic campus, and Brown without Professor Cooper is quite impossible to imagine. Mindful of the loyal devotion with which you have served Brown University, the academy, and the world, and in gratitude for your great personal contributions to this university and noble pursuit of knowledge, we, the faculty, award you the highest honor that we can grant, the Susan Culver Rosenberger Medal. Pache, pache. Uh, well, I had a 45-minute speech prepared, but I think maybe uh, I had expected you to say that in Latin. But <laughs> this is really a deep and wonderful honor. The fact that it is bestowed by fellow faculty makes it all the more precious. I really appreciate this enormously. I appreciate your applause. I have appreciated teaching and working here at Brown. And I would like to say, I appreciate enormously the opportunity that Brown has given me to pursue most of the research that is being honored here. Thank you very much. to rise and please join me in singing the alma mater. And I hope we have music.
now give the benediction, after which the 245th commencement exercises will be adjourned. Hope ascends Brunonia as you rise. Anchor it always in the good. Claim joy, confer dignity. Study the faces of children. Find each day's occupation in the service of justice, even mercy. Fly safely from these gates. Return often and dwell always in deep peace. Amen. <laughs>